Of course, um, Lloyd Shaw, a Colorado man, educator, Colorado Springs, had long before that got involved with square dancing and taught his kids Cheyenne School. The Cheyenne School graduated their students from the high school and sent them off to Colorado colleges, including Boulder and Greeley and Fort Collins. And they were the ones who founded the square dance clubs, which I joined in the 50s. Calico and Boots was started about 1945 and continued after the war. And and still, still is. And still is going, although I don't think now they are on campus. Uh, the movement has changed. It's decreased amongst college age people. And so the, the, the people who are attracted to Calico and Boots dances now are young adults, 20s, 30s. And so that's who dances with the group. Calico and Boots, of course, had their exhibition team, which was modeled on Cheyenne dancers. And the figures that we learned for our exhibition demonstration uh, dances, square dances, were Cheyenne Mountain figures. We embellished them, improved them, of course, but uh, that's what we did for our demonstrations. And I don't think, outside of myself, I don't think anyone has ever written down descriptions of those figures. But I have quite a few of those figures written down that I did as a dancer in college 50 years ago. Now, now, when Shaw set up the Cheyenne Mountain Dancers, I mean, he had been going out and doing research in Colorado, but a lot of, I mean, and the Cheyenne Dancers would do this whole program. Of, yes, of and, did, of, and so did we. Okay, of all forms. All kinds of, of dancing. But some of that included figures that Shaw certainly did not find in Colorado Grange Halls, the, the aerial figures. That's that, true. Uh, oh, yes, uh, Shaw, Shaw was a showman. Uh, he was not a purist. He was really not a researcher. But he took what he found and improved it and made it showy so that people watching would be intrigued and amazed by it. And he had these energetic high school kids who had enough verve and life, you know, to put, put themselves wholeheartedly into anything that they did. And they enjoyed it. And that showed definitely when they were on stage in, in front of the crowd, and the crowd was wowed by them. They came leaping onto the stage with this running two-step that they did as a way to get onto the stage and into the square. And, and from there on, it just got more and more energetic. They lifted the girls, birdies in the trees. They had the flap. They had the flip. There were all kinds of figures that they did in which the girls were off the floor. Um, so it was a very exciting routine that they did, and they did several of them. Of course, they had their traditional moments, too, where they did visiting couple figures. But he even made up visiting couple figures, Dive and Rescue the Lady. Nobody I, I does that. I don't know that one. It's in his book. It's a, a cryptic description. But if you work at it, it does work. And it's fun to do and tough. It's a not, not an easy figure, but uh, it's fun to do. And uh, even doing it on a stage as a part of a demonstration dance, it will please the audience. And you know, some of the visiting couple figures are not terribly exciting. They're interesting to do, but, but they're more social figures than they are exciting demonstration figures. So that's part of the man's genius, is finding ways of taking traditional dance and showcasing it in a way that makes it fun for an audience as opposed to fun sure. for the participants. Sure. Of course, for 20 years, 15 years prior to his discovery of the square dance, he was involved in folk dancing. And of course, the beauty of folk dancing is partly in the music and sometimes in the dynamics of the dance, the excitement of the dance, but it's also in the costuming and that kind of thing. But it's, but it's not American. He really preferred, and the pinnacle of his programs were always 
the American square. Right. My understanding is that all the children learned to do folk dance, but square dance was considered an adult activity, it and was. only the high school students got to do square that's, dance. That's correct. They didn't get to do those square dances until they got to a certain age. But by the time they got to that age, they had already had significant training in dance in general, not just folk dancing. But he did, he had modern dance in his school, and um, there was some rhythm, rhythm dance, you know, that this, I don't know what the name of it is now, I can't remember that. But um, there was a movement during the 20s and 30s to do gymnastic rhythm sort of things, particularly with children, and he involved all of that in his program. So by the time they got to high school, they could move, they could do, they knew timing, they knew something about music, and they were ready. And besides, they could see the kids in the high school doing these things. Yeah. They were exciting to watch, and they really wanted to do that more than almost anything. Yeah. And so that, it, they were hooked just as observers.